Good morning, so this is our Daikin Haltherma 8 kilowatt heat pump installed by Octopus Energy last week. It's been a long process, it's taken, well, started November last year. Um, we were able to do an online quote through the Octopus website and it, for us on our three bedroom uh, 1930s semi-detached house, it came out as uh, 2,180 pounds to pay. Um, that's after the government heat pump grant of 7,500. Um, we were very pleased with that price because it included all necessary radiator changes. In the end, we had five radiators changed um, based on the heat survey and a further one changed during installation um, just for aesthetic purposes. So this is the heat pump running outside. So these two black pipes you can see are the hot and cold water flow into the house um, so the the you can see it's got an r32 gas thing on the side of this heat pump all of that coolant gas is internal to the heat pump what you actually get flowing in and out of the house is hot water and um, the return water and that water is used to either heat um, via a coil a hot water tank so you can have a shower or a bath uh, or you know do the washing up or whatever and it also switches to run um, through uh, radiators to heat your house uh, you can see the pumps running at the moment and you can hear some background noise so the pump itself is actually really really quiet I think I'm quite um, impressed with it we did have to do a noise assessment um, because our neighbor's house as you can see um, just here uh, the Dakin pumps rated at something like 60 plus dBAs and under the microgeneration certification system scheme you have to uh, be 42 dBAs at the nearest neighbor's habitable window and basically this means measuring a distance of about 9 meters um, to ensure you know the noise is such at their habitable window um, Although that's the worst case noise, and as you can hear, actually when the heat pump's generally running, it's, it's lower than audible background noise. Uh, there's a little electrical cabinet here that you can see, um, and this, you can have an option of outdoors or indoors. This has got um, the air source heat pump supply, and also um, the tank internally, which you'll see in a minute, has um, a booster immersion heater to, to do an anti-legionella cycle once per week. Um, that's just to make sure it gets up to 60 degrees C once a week. Um, Octopus redid some of our plumbing for us. Um, it's a bit of a pickle behind here, but that's not their fault really. It's, it was much worse before um, they removed the gas pipe and one of the drain pipes. I plan to tidy up a little bit more with some more insulation. Um, but essentially they did redo our white drain pipe, which was falling <laughs> all over the place. Um, and then you've got some electrical cables and a little bit of um, uh, clay dust. But yeah, that's essentially it. Um, it has to be mounted about 300 mil off the wall. Um, but it still leaves, it's quite a slimline model and leaves quite enough, plenty of space for us. Um, Octopus also stuck in an extra outside tap which um, my wife is very pleased with because that will help her with her um, uh, gardening there we go I'm gonna move inside now so this is inside the house the octopus heat pump install you can just see the heat pump outside so we thought about our pipe routing reasonably carefully and we went for essentially a back-to-back -back arrangement which meant we didn't have very long <clears throat> pipe runs so the hot and cold well, not hot and cold, flow and return hot water you saw outside comes in through the wall here. And then we have three main items. We've got the 180 litre uh, Dakin hot water tank. So this is what supplies our all our hot water needs in the house. It's got a coil of, that runs around it to um, heat up the water. And I've set it to run a, um, a schedule at night. So it heats, starts heating about four o'clock in the morning when we get um, seven P per kilowatt hour electricity and it takes uh, about an hour and a half to heat the tank up to sort of uh, 48 to 50 degrees C for our hot water um, and then you have this item on the right which is called a volumizer so this is for the radiator system and it acts like a 
like a giant radiator really. I gather it's used to um, ensure that you still get um, good um, flow rates if you turn down some of the radiators and also in very cold outside conditions it can be used to um, dump hot water outside to ensure that um, <clears throat> no pipes freeze up. Um, at least that's the best of my understanding. And then the smaller tank on the left is um, an expansion vessel. Um, the whole system is a pressurized hot water system. An expansion vessel, obviously, as you heat water, it expands and it needs somewhere to go. And that's got a diaphragm in it. Um, most combi boilers have one of these internally anyway, and um, other hot water tanks. Um, so um, we're quite pleased with the installation. It is a lot of equipment to sit inside, you, as you see. Um, 180 litre tank on our test so far seems to be fine. We've had three short showers in the morning and a bath um, in the evening and still had hot water left. Um, the temperature also seems to stay very hot throughout the day. You've got this control unit here where you can set various settings and you can see that our hot water is currently 51 degrees C, pressure 1.2 bar, it's 12 degrees C outside. And you can go into this uh, via the controls and set various schedules if you want to. Um, it's got an app, a Dakin Nectar app that also um, sets up, connects to it wirelessly and um, there's a room thermostat as well um, that we've put out in the hallway. Um, slightly annoying, it was a wired thermostat so we ended up going, running the cable along the wall and in through the back um, into the hallway which actually looks very neat uh, both outside and inside but um, you know, in this day and age, you'd think a wireless thermostat would be possible. Um, this is one of the radiators. It was replaced. And as you can see, it's um, it's a double radiator, essentially. Um, I think they refer to them as K2s, at least that's what I've heard. Um, the thing that surprised me about the radiators is, in my mind, I expected them to be absolutely enormous. Um, whereas, in fact, in terms of um, physical footprint, they're either the same or smaller. Um, in the case of this one, it's actually smaller than the radiator we had in here, um, but more efficient. Um, so, I don't know, radiators really weren't an issue. Every single one, as you can see, we have 10 mil microbore cable. And what they've done in each case, uh, sorry, not cable, piping. In each case, they've uh, simply resoldered on and done a pretty neat job, generally, of uh, connecting the new radiators. Um, so overall, very pleased with the system. Mm. There it is, but you do need quite a lot of internal space. So it's definitely worth thinking where you're going to put this equipment.